going to ask each one of you, so the challenge that you had, whether it was, you know, getting into the technology, it was a culture change, walk us through just for, you know, a minute or so, two minutes, how do you start that change? Because we've heard about, you know, I've got to get executive buy-in, but some of this is, there is no, there is no white paper written, there is no best practice. Talk a little bit about how you went through that challenge of saying, like, how are we going to take on uh, managing the kitchen, if you will? Uh, with, um we have an ecosystem for you in almost four years, and um, we we started very early to to put that onto a, a containerized uh, or to Docker containers. Um, but uh, what we felt about that was um, that that we uh, it's strictly on AWS, and we have it's not that um, scaling as we like to have that, and we are we are looking for a different solution for that, and how to make that better, and then. Um, we had a look at several solutions, of course, in the market, um, but in the end, we came to the, um, the conclusion that with Kubernetes or in the, in the, the platform OpenShift, of course, um, it was much easier to to get into that uh, stage where we can have. The, I heard that today a lot of times to have that DevOps approach. When it was very important for us to have the developers. Uh, in the respon responsibility of their own applications, and that was what we are lacking for the for the current solution, and what we have to want to have for the new solution, and that's what we can do actually with OpenShift at, at its best, and that was for us the main reason to go that way. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah jump in. Um, uh, uh, I think that the technology such as OpenShift enable the possibility to, to make uh, a real DevOps, but uh, the, the change is uh, in a role, and if uh, uh, in the role of each department of a company, uh, uh, have to work, uh, 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 sorry. It's okay. Um, a, a mentality, yeah, a mentality change for for uh, use this technology that uh, uh, permit this uh, transformation. But uh, transformation is uh, in mind, not in technology. Technology uh, uh, actually is m is mature for uh, create easy task, easy pipeline, easy CI/CD uh, deployment. But uh, uh, the business must. Uh, invest uh, on this type of uh, approach. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ask Ken and, and Sphere, sort of a, a variation on that. So Ken, you know, you're dealing with Black Friday transactions, which for some parents buying gifts feels like a life or death thing. If you don't get the right thing, Sphere, you're actually dealing with life and death stuff. How do you convince your team, your management, that some new technology is the right way to go when, when you know that's the risk that you're, you're kind of balancing it against. How, walk us through a little bit of that thought process of how do we make this work? So uh, for us, uh, we, we actually had a little bit of a, a perfect storm. Um, to, to make business decisions, cost is usually the driver. Uh, and to build highly reliable systems is extremely expensive. And one of the things that I was faced with as the chief architect was to reduce the cost per transaction. Uh, because as we scaled the solution and more and more tenants were coming on board, the, the cost of the transaction was, was impacting us. Um, and so to, to get the same, what we call non-functional requirements, the same availability model uh, with containers was actually a lot easier to do than with traditional infrastructure. Uh, and we have a geo-distributed platform, so you know, we have data centers throughout the world. And being able to run uh, multiple OpenShift clusters and be able to scale up multiple uh, container instances and be able to kill any one of them at any point in time and, and not have it even phase the system was pretty compelling. And then to, to show that we could do all of that uh, and lay this infrastructure out at an order of magnitude less cost was the, the business justification that we needed to, to be able to pull the trigger on it. Yeah. That coupled with uh, the company driving towards an agile model and DevOps coming into being, all of those things kind of blended together to create a perfect storm. Uh, but it was really unique in that this wasn't an initiative that was driven by operations. It was an initiative driven by architecture to try to reduce the, the cost yeah. uh, of running the service. And so we kind of 
dragged operations along. Uh, but once they started working with the platform, they, they, they haven't looked back. They're, they're very happy. Yeah, and, and is that done in a combination of a bunch of spreadsheets to talk to the, to the finance house, but, but also a bunch of demonstrations and POCs? To yeah, we, we, uh, when we initially proposed it, um, we have this thing at uh, ACI called the Technical Review Board. Uh, and you can bring any innovation idea to it and get funding. It's, um, it's kind of like that uh, TV show where you present your idea and you try to get money for it. Um, I'm not sure if, if people are familiar with it. But, um, and so it was originally pitched as a POC. Uh, and we got uh, some small funding to go off and uh, do the POC because some people uh, were concerned that it wouldn't scale because uh, the other uh, platform was written in C++ on Solaris. And everyone thought that that's the highest performing environment in the world. And how could we build microservices on Java and have it perform as well? Uh, and so we did the POC and, and showed that through the scalability of the platform, we could easily surpass what the, the capability was of the, of the original platform. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, we mainly just told management that uh, a st red technolo technology stack from Red Hat could solve the GDPR problems. And we were home safe. So, so, somebody told you there's just no way to kill a Linux machine, and you, you took that as a challenge? That's part of the truth. But what we actually did was telling them that uh, actually GDPR is, is a sh huge load in, in, uh, in business processes uh, documenting a lot of stuff. And, and since we're working in three different SBUs, um, we need sort of bridging those in a new digital era, if you want. Right. Um, and they could see that we need to change from, from the legacy systems that we're running. We have three different uh, case handling systems, and, and uh, I think the newest one is actually mainly built by Indians before they got structured. Uh, the first automation they had was an Indian guy sitting in India and pushing a button, and then it was automated. Yeah. Um, that's not compliance. Um, and, and it seems like the business could see this demand for new technology and stuff. So we made a couple of uh, PUCs, uh, invited the right people, uh, some of the developers, uh, and they were all, you know, they got a red hat and saw some new toolbox and they won immediately. Yeah. Uh, so it was more the culture change that would be the issue. We saw that immediately. Uh, and, and the first problem was actually our general management uh, because they were used to just going into the IT department, demanding whatever needs they had, but suddenly the process is changing. Now they need to document a lot of stuff, uh, especially according to GDPR, before we can actually start the development. Uh, and I think that was probably the, the, the biggest driver to, to make the change and actually to establish this spy model uh, setup. Yeah. In yeah. Second chance. Anybody got a question? Oh, gentleman in the back. Oh, Joe, you got it? I'll get it. <laughs> Run around. What you got? Hi. Hi. Okay, so uh, my question is uh, for those that are doing microservices development or cloud native development, which kind of goes hand in hand with the container platforms. Um, how did you guys train and enable your app teams to make sure that they're doing it the right way as opposed to just developing, let's say, the old style big monolithic apps and just dumping it on OpenShift? I could start saying that um, we started out hiring a team from Red Hat uh, and they are still onboarded, half of them. Uh, we are hiring in developers uh, and making sort of, uh, you know, training on, on the job, how to do it. Uh, we have uh, a complete DevOps team from, from Red Hat helping us out, uh, you know, getting the right culture, the right uh, perspectives. They have been helping us with architecture, everything, since we only knew about Microsoft Service. So that's how we did it. Maybe I can add something here. Um, we at Forvec, we, we are a company of um, playing, playing people, um, playing maybe children, maybe playing children. And if you get a new toy, then you, the developers are allowed to, to play with that. And that's, uh, at the moment, we are at that stadium so that they can play around with their test cluster. But um, 
of course, we have to also be GDPR compliant, um, and we have a lot of uh, quality assurance. And we are currently building a framework for for OpenShift to have a central point of checking compliance, checking security, and so on. And that will, in future, will be introduced. And then, of course, the the children cannot play anymore in that way. So they have some direction where where they can go, and some direction where they, they can't go. And um, that's that's uh, the way we are currently doing that. Yeah, we, uh, we spun the environment up by uh, doing some initial training. Um, it, it was almost like a grassroots uh, organization at, uh, at ACI. Uh, we started by presenting um, to the, the Technical Leadership Council um, this, the concept of microservices and how to build them. Um, then we created uh, small development teams that started working and building microservices. And then we actually expanded them into the, the Docker realm after uh, they were already working with microservices. So we didn't start out of the gate just building on Docker. We started out of the gate trying to build microservices that was stateless uh, in nature. Uh, and then it evolved so that each team picked up one Docker expert, uh, and it, it would just kind of picked up uh, steam from there. Um, the unfortunate thing, uh, to, in all honesty, is that when you self-learn like that, you pick up bad habits. And um, when knowledge is not available, you try to figure out ways to work around the knowledge gaps, and then you apply uh, things into the environment that are not necessarily best practices. And so now we're in a little bit of a, a backpedal, uh, and we're trying to uh, fix some of our earlier sins uh, where we made compensations uh, for lack of knowledge, and uh, we're, we're revising things uh, now, so it'll, it'll be an even better environment. Okay, uh, I say to you to uh, our experience on uh, deploy and create a microservice application. Uh, last year we choose the, the, the platform and uh, we integrate it in uh, our ecosystem. And uh, later uh, we uh, we choose um, uh, uh, an one of a big application, internal application, all the uh, application with uh, more and more feature, with a big ear to deploy on different uh, uh, application server and uh, um, with uh, application team and uh, work uh, together. We, we try to uh, integrate uh, the first uh, uh, pillar of microservice uh, uh, 12 factor and uh, 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 begin uh, together to uh, separate and uh, uh, functionality and extract the functionality from uh, main application we create a duality uh, uh, with all the application in application server layer and in a new application uh, written with uh, some principle of uh, microservice. And uh, we, m we manage uh, duality and uh, we uh, develop a few, uh, f uh, main f uh, feature such as landing page or uh, uh, payment uh, service. And uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with a month uh, of, of the developer uh, together, we can move the the customer from the old uh, uh, legacy application to a new a new application uh, and new infrastructure. Uh, benefits of uh, a modern CI/CD deployment pipeline with uh, a Git server with a Jenkins integrated in our. Uh, change management application. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, the microservice way is uh, a very uh, uh, training of a job uh, uh, work. To uh, today, in uh, our company, we have um, a main table for uh, uh, com uh, composed by operator team, but uh, many architect and many application team who debate, debate uh, the best way to realize uh, uh, right pattern for internal application for give to uh, other uh, uh, fabric uh, application uh, this pattern for uh, uh, make an um, uh, internal library to uh, 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 to, to program in easy way a new uh, application uh, written in uh, uh, with a microservice uh, uh, way. But it's, it's a tra training of a job uh, isn't uh, 
a, an agile uh, approach, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, gentlemen, for, for time, I think we're going to wrap it up with that. That was a, I, we appreciate the input, folks. I appreciate the question. Just for the lack, for the sense of time, we're going to bring up some of the PMs so we can kind of do a, an ask me anything and then we can get to kind of stretching and, and, and uh, getting out, having a beer, having a drink, talking with some people. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for the time tonight.